All right, so we're here at Best Buy. I'm uh, recording on my GoPro here at eight right now, and I'm using the mic mod for the first time. So I'm gonna talk a little bit quieter and see if it works. I also adjusted a lot of my settings to see if uh, the low light setting works on the GoPro without the light, but I'm about to go buy the light. I'm here at Best Buy. You can see right behind me. So yeah, I'll see you inside. So yeah, here's a little GoPro station inside Best Buy. They got the 9, the 10, the Max. Those prices though, crazy. And then you got the Media Mod, which I came in here for. So I really needed the Light Mod, which is right there. And then I need an SSD, an SSD uh, external hard drive that's going to be able to handle Final Cut Pro, which is what I'm currently editing on right now. So I think I'm gonna get the T7, uh, 114 bucks for one terabyte. That's a pretty good price. And then I got the Yeti or the Blue, which is the Ubisoft. I got the All right, so I'm here edition. at Home Depot. It's pretty dark out. It's like dust, uh, dusk, <laughs> dust. That's funny. Um, anyways, I'm here at Home Depot. Uh, I got this light mod on the GoPro now. Let's see how it works. I'm gonna kind of use it throughout the entire story, even though I'm gonna be inside and there's gonna be plenty of light. I wanna see how it works. All right, so let's walk through Home Depot. And so I plan on showing you a lot of my favorite brands, a lot of the go-to items that I use in here. And speaking of, here's the outdoor electrical. I use the Giant. Uh, power strip for my main workbench, which houses a lot of my stuff. So kind of funny, I had to tell you guys. So right behind me, I was recording the outdoor uh, power strips uh, and outdoor electrical stuff that you would have in the garage. And I was like, man, where's the indoor? Where's the indoor power strips, right? And so I went to ask like an associate, is your indoor you know, power strips? And it was literally right next to it. I just thought it was kind of funny. And the guy was like, yeah, I wish they labeled things better. Yeah. I All right, so here we go with most of the uh, main brands. So Bear, Bear Paint, Bear Premium Paint, uh, Deep Base, which is what you're looking at right now, is which is just what I use to flip furniture with. Um, you have, you know, matte, semi-gloss, and gloss in that. And then we'll come over here to, um, goof off so goof off is what i use on my dirt bike a lot of the time actually it helps get a lot of the exhaust residue off and stuff but it works great around the house any kind of glue or you know those stickers that just you know leave that residue that won't come off use goof off and then you got acetone acetone is one of the best things to take off any kind of paint so if you overspray, you need to clean tools whatever it is this company right here makes the best acetone in my opinion best paintbrush is going to be the Wooster Pro um, the nylon uh, polyester it's all for all paints and stains it, it just works the best all right so the Graco Magnum series and then the X17 which you're about to see right now is mine again you have your bare palette colors uh, tons of colors they're all good you can't go wrong with bear at all home depot did their homework again bear bear wood stains premium can't go wrong i used to like barathane which you could kind of see in that picture but bear is where it's at bear polyurethane again i used to do uh barathane bear is where it's at bear uh semi and then gloss i like to mix and then you'll get a you'll get a good gloss finish uh, gorilla glue gorilla glue as well as gorilla tape is my go-to tape i'll tape things down inside the garage do projects inside yeah here's some more type of packing tape and mount tape for inside the house that won't leave anything on your walls. And then you obviously have your painter's tape. This right here won't leave any residue, so it's really good for anything that you have to just tape off in order to put paint on without leaving any sort of residue. So my go-to brand when it comes to long industrial size uh, screws um, is gonna be Timberlock. Timberlock has done great things for me in the past. Uh, the the sanctuary seating I use Timberlock. Um, I don't really like the screws too much at Home Depot, but if I have to buy screws at Home Depot, Griprite's a pretty good brand. Um, I have one of these big cases right here with two and a half inch 
is what I use for pocket holes. Some people say don't use those for pocket holes, but I do. Uh, GRK, GRK would be um, over the other brand um, in regard to quality, I believe. So yeah, their multi-purpose screws is what I use for pretty much everything. But yeah, GRK is a pretty good brand too. Uh, for tape measures, the Milwaukee Auto Lock is where it's at. I haven't found a better tape measure than this. All right, so for speed squares, obviously you got your giant one right here, and that's I use those for a lot for like two by tens, and then you got your small ones for two by fours, and then your medium size for like two by sixes. They all work good. The Milwaukee is my favorite brand, other than the Empire, and then you have your Milwaukee uh, flip out. Uh, folding utility knife this by far is the best utility blade so I just showed you the basic one that this one right here has five extra blades in it so if you're on the job and you need some extra blades there you go you got it best uh, clamps in my opinion are DeWalt clamps I don't know there's lots of clamps on the market DeWalt clamps they just they got phenomenal grip strength strength so Milwaukee gloves, I've tried a lot of gloves. The level one works the best for me. And then you got your Milwaukee uh, safety glasses. You have a whole bunch of different brands. You have different tints. Uh, then you have your mask. So dust, dust mask, obviously. I'm looking at the Milwaukee right here. You got different packs. You got different strengths of you know stopping power in terms of dust. All right, so then you have the DeWalt mitter saw. You have your normal mitter saw, which is not your sliding compound. Then you have your sliding compound 12 inch mitter saw. That's the one I have right there. Well worth the extra money. Get the sliding so that you can slide on bigger pieces of wood. Then you have all your blades over here. I like to at least use 100 tooth. 80 to 100 tooth uh, works great. 120 is really good, but uh, super clean finish. Then you have your rigid table saw, which is your job site table saw. Really good table saw. Uh, I like the Diablo. Some people prefer other sandpapers, uh, but the Diablo ends up working really well for me. I have all the different grits, all the way from 60 to 300. All right, so this right here, for those that don't know, you can go grab lumber and then you can come over here and like a hardwood piece of lumber is the only thing I've ever used and you use your hand saws and you make sure to grab a tape measure. All right, so I didn't really know how to touch on the lumber section too much, but I mean, the prices of lumber these days are crazy, but there's your two by two pile. So I think these uh, blue pattern pieces of lumber are also really nice. Um, I haven't really done any work with them, but I keep eyeing them. And then you have your hardwood section. I think a Home Depot is obviously way better than Lowe's in terms of hardwood. Uh, I've bought a couple pieces of maple, a couple pieces of oak. I've done some lathe work with them. They're, they're really good, but they're, again, they're by the foot, so they get it really expensive really quick. All right, so then we have our pieces of plywood. Look how expensive those are. Ridiculously expensive, but yeah, you got some pretty good plywood in Home Depot. I would say it's, it's quality. I would definitely buy plywood from here rather than uh, Lowe's. Then we got our Redwoods 2x4s, 15 bucks a board though. I mean, that's crazy compared to half price for some pine. But yeah, you got your normal 2x4s, 2x6s. Check out this DeWalt mitter saw. It's extremely industrial, I don't know. If I could find something like that on the market, I would love to buy it, but there's no way I'll probably ever be able to find that. But yeah, this is in the back of Home Depot. They'll cut some boards for you. Then you have your sizes. Um, again, we're headed into some more lumber, two by fours, two by sixes. Here's the prices for them. Nothing really special here. That's the two by four pile here, two by four by eight feet. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go into what you should look for whenever you pick a board out regardless what it is in in construction lumber like this especially if you're building furniture um 
you definitely need to make sure that you have straight boards uh, especially if you don't have a planer or a joiner all right so here i am grabbing a two by four i'll grab a nice one out of the pile real quick all right so i'm going to grab my camera i'm going to point it straight down the board you want to make sure that it's not left or right uh, facing down the board in either direction and then obviously you need to make sure that it's not warped if it's twisting or turning in either direction then yeah you probably shouldn't buy it this one right here in particular it looked pretty straight and then again make sure that there's no cracks that are going all the way through the board if there's some divots or knots that are kind of roughed up it's up to you if you want to keep something like that but uh, it just depends on what kind of project you're doing like right here there's a big chunk to taken out of a knot. I wouldn't buy this board unless I really wanted a giant chunk out of the side of the board for some reason. But yeah, that's that right there is what you need to look out for. So here's kind of like a two by two. It's extremely warped. So this is going to be an extreme uh, case of something that's warped. So I wanted you guys to see something that looked extremely warped. So you can obviously see how it's bowed in every single direction. All right, so it is officially dark. Let's all get out out here. And this light is like bright in my face, but I hope it gets good footage. Here's the truck. I mean, the truck looks pretty dark. But with this light, I bet you will light it up real nice. Let's get in.